Hello, this is Telecom TV. We are at the Wireless Global Congress in London, and I'm talking with Chris Spencer, Chief Technology Officer at Global Reach Technology. Hello, Chris, good to see you again. Great to be here. Thank you. Let's go straight into it. You're the CTO of Global Reach. Yes. So can you tell us about your technology roadmap to improve the Wi-Fi experience overall? Because Wi-Fi has a, a sort of patchy history and something of a reputation on some occasions. Yeah, yeah. So I guess the, the, the big one at the moment that everybody's talking about is around the hotspot too and the, uh, things like that. Uh, the current problem that we're facing is the onboarding of the clients onto it, certainly from a, an enterprise type of level. Uh, the carriers are fine with this. They're able to do that through their back-end channels to the mobile phones, either before they're deployed or, or issued out through their, their chain of stores or via uh, over-the-air SIM messages or something like that to provision those. Uh, within the enterprise, though, it's been a challenge to onboard those. So I'm working heavily with the mobile operating uh, companies, uh, you know, the, the big three, uh, on how we improve that whole onboarding experience uh, which is needed within the industry. So we're currently talking about everybody's, uh, the, the ultimate holy grail is when we get to release two of the standard and the specification. Uh, we're not fully there at the moment. We're still within the release one phase and release one is more around the networking uh, back-end infrastructure. So the sort of the client has been overlooked a little bit. Uh, but the benefits that the enterprise are seeing is around the security, the seamless authentication, the, 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 the a connection to the networks and things like that happening in a seamless environment. So uh, me and my team uh, back within Global Reach are working on those, improving those onboarding experiences. So recently we have just launched the ability to uh, do a very simple uh, NFC tap. Uh, there's more and more QI charges now are starting to appear in hotels and other industry sectors where I can be encouraged to go and buy a coffee and put my phone on a charger and whilst that's charging that NFC chip that's on there can prompt to actually you could join the network as well. So going through all of those different onboarding experiences is a big thing for Global Reach and my team at the moment. Really good answer, thank you. Um, can we stay with the roadmap for a minute? Well, I want to come on to uh, Hot Point 2.0 in a minute, but let's stay with the roadmap. And roadmaps, by definition, should have a start point and an end point. Yeah. How close are you to the end point? There's a few steps within that. So I believe in a roadmap, as you've just said, but I also believe that there is a long-term roadmap, a mid-term roadmap, and a short-term roadmap. Mm -hmm. Short-term being 90 days, uh, mid-term being probably a year and out like that. Because even when Release 2 comes out into the uh, ecosystem and one of the big three drop that on us and things like that, there's still that transition that happens. I think uh, Apple said the other day in one of the uh, events that 50 something percent now have moved to iOS 12 in such a short space of time. Uh, I think Apple lead the way in that um, a rollout of their firmware and their technology because they control that whole end-to-end -end ecosystem. Uh, some of the other operators and operating systems don't, so they have to wait for users to either naturally upgrade or, in some cases, the carrier to upgrade the end devices. And there are the, the, the complexities and the commercial issues around do they want to do that or do they want to sell you the next generation phone. Uh, so we're working within those types of constraints and things like that. So I, I believe we have a short term vision which is uh, helping the enterprises make their decisions. We've had uh, some, some key facts over the, uh, the last few weeks that I've been out at various hospitality events and things like that. I'll give you a prime example is a cruise ship. They take six years to build. The last two years, they're in complete and utter lockdown. Unless it is something absolutely mission critical, then the spec and the design and the infrastructure and the, even down to what equipment goes in and where that goes in has been defined is two years old. So we need to be doing a very, very big push at the moment, knowing that it might be two years out in some of these industries. Airlines are another one. It's very expensive to bring an airline out of, uh, an airplane out of service into uh, a, a hangar, refit it, retrofit it, or the new planes and things like that. Satellites, throwing a satellite into space. Again, it's technology that's actually out of date by the time it's, you know, uh, 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 two years before it's even launched, put, strapped into a rocket and, uh, and sent off there. So I, I believe we've got that roadmap, but it's broken into specific chunks. Our end goal is when, literally, I don't even think about Wi-Fi. And our conversation is, we, you know, when, I, when I demonstrate it, I literally get my phone out of my pocket and it's just connected. It should be that true seamless experience from a user's perspective, a user's point of view, 
there shouldn't be a UX. It should just be there. I quite agree with you. <laughs> you know what it's like. Can we go back, back to the hotspot then, uh, Chris, mm -hmm. if we could? Hotspot 2.0. What is it? Give us a bit more detail on it. And what does it mean to the user? As I've probably just commented, it's broken into two parts. We have release one and we have release two. Uh, release two is all around the, uh, the, the client and, so, uh, and the, the client devices. Uh, release one is more around the network pre-selection. Uh, so uh, again, trying to put this into an example that's uh, understandable by everybody is when we jump off a plane and we're in Spain and we're going on our holiday and things like that, our phone takes a few seconds to work out which carrier it's going to join and joins that carrier for us. I've not had to do anything. In most cases, most people have let their devices are set to auto and it all happens for them. Hotspot 2 brings that within release 1. It's, it's through something called uh, 802.11u. Uh, the SSID name doesn't play a really a role in that. The user doesn't have to go and select a network. That's all done at that pre-association uh, state. My device knows it can connect to this network. It also knows it's secure. So we've also tackled, so we've, 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 we've tackled the network pre-selection, the automatic selection of the network. We've also tackled the security. So we can't have a rogue access point, as people have commented on previously in the past, of I can be connected to it and be tri uh, tricked into giving away my username and password or something like that. In those, that, that can't happen in Hotspot 2. Every access point is validated as I connect to it. So we've handled the network and the back-end elements. Uh, release 2 is more focused on the client side of this, so getting the profile onto the device, the policy, so making sure I get what I pay for and things like that, uh, and something called remediation. Remediation, in its simplest terms, can be actually telling somebody that they've used 80% of their data allowance or their allowance, or that they need to maybe accept new terms and conditions in this particular country to carry on accessing some form of call to action to allow the user to continue on the internet. So it's broken into the two, two elements at the moment. Uh, release one, uh, tried and tested and rolled out in lots and lots of sectors already. Release two, we're literally just entering that phase. It's getting very exciting at the moment in that particular space. It is very interesting stuff, good developments. Can we finish off by talking about specific use cases? We've talked about the technology, the theory, and the way you hope it'll go. Uh, what about use cases as to how this, and you mentioned frictionless UX and being deployed at enterprise level. What does that mean? Well, you can treat an enterprise, so in some cases an enterprise can be a, a business as we imagine a business, but actually it can be a city, it can be a hotel chain, it can be a cruise liner. Uh, so it's really that convergence that this, this whole technology is allowing us to do it. Uh, from the traffic attendant walking around the city can be connected to the city itself, smart cars passing through that. So it's that whole, con to be honest, it's a, it's a very, very large convergence of IoT devices, smart cars, uh, traffic control signaling based on the smart cars and where they all are. So we're going down that whole uh, a visionary route. We've got some cities that are very, very forward thinking. We've got some car manufacturers now that are very, very forward thinking in those technology and those technology space. So the enterprise play is a really, really big one for us. We're involved in lots of those. We do a lot of the city roaming projects where Hotspot 2 is being uh, rolled out like that. Uh, when we bring it back into the what uh, more people think of as a traditional enterprise, it could be something as simple as staff access within an enterprise environment on a secure network uh, compared to maybe a WPA2 shared key that all staff know. So if a staff member leaves, they have to roll all of the new passwords out and things like that. Uh, it, it's moving to that um, a client trust relationship to that particular network. Good stuff. Very interesting. Chris Spencer, thank you. Thank you very much.